today I have on a whim decided I want to replicate equestrian Stockholm saddle pads. So here we are. Uh, I've chosen a couple of different fabrics we're going to go through, which what I've chosen and the materials that I've decided to use. Um, everything was purchased at Hobby Lobby, so I guess you can get pretty much anything that you need at the local craft store, whatever that may be, as long as they provide whatever you need to do quilting. So this is quilt batting, you've got your satin fabrics. I tried to choose a breathable structure fabric for the back, um, just like the Equestrian Stockholm pads do have. I've never owned one, I've always wanted one, so here we are. Alright, so before we really begin this thing, we're going to note the differences between an Equestrian Stockholm and PS of Sweden saddle pads here. I am replicating kind of a hybrid between the two. This is the Equestrian Stockholm pad. It is $95, as you'll see in this slide. It does not have a strip of padding in the front, and it also has diagonal stitching. This is the PS of Sweden pad, also diagonal stitching, padding in the front. The color is a little bit closer on this one compared to the one that I'm making. And they all have these little patches on the sides. This next slide here is the PS of Sweden pad with the $95. Alright, so let's talk materials. This is a satin fabric I got from Hobby Lobby. It's kind of like a uh, bluish kind of cool color, very different in the lighting here. This is the porous black structured fabric I got for the back of the pad. Um, it should be okay for being breathable, but we'll see how it holds up in the long run. This is quilt batting. I used four layers per side. I cut it out to shape, and you can get it at any craft store. It's just from Hobby Lobby. Um, I motioned that I made three layers, but it ended up being four in the end. I do have extra fabric, so I may be making a dressage saddle pad in the future, um, but that's probably on hold for now. This is my template for the dressage saddle pad. I really like the shape of this one, especially with the squared corner, but I'll be using this jump saddle pad. Um, the bonnet doesn't really match, but I may end up making a bonnet to match as well. There's going to be padding up in the front, just like the PS of Sweden pad. Also, I plan on cutting the spine here a little bit taller. The reason for that being, it makes it a little bit more anatomical for the horse's back. Alright, so let's get this thing put together. We're going to start with layer 1, the black backing. Layer 2 is going to be our four layers of quilt batting. And layer 3 is our satin top layer. Just to start out here, I started with a tester piece. I made sure that the stitching could get through all the layers of the quilt batting and through my hard backing. When I started on the sewing machine, I did start with the diagonal squares appropriate for both of the pad styles but I had a lot of trouble getting it to quit shifting with the fabric. So even on just the first line here, the fabric was already shifting, so I decided that that just wasn't going to fly. So I grabbed this coupon for seminal feed, which happened to be the perfect size for my squares, and I marked them off onto the fabric. So then I had a template on spacing, and that worked really, really well. Back on the machine, I'm still going diagonal because I hadn't really learned my lesson yet. Um, <laughs> so we go kind of like this for a little while until I realize, oh wow, this is shifting really, really bad. So I ended up ripping all of it out and starting over again. I found this um, big old billboardy thing that has super straight lines and I measured off exactly where I needed my stitches to be. And then I marked every single part of the line so I had a perfect template and that helped a lot with making sure that my stitches were really really straight. Back on the machine I finally learned my lesson I'm doing straight lines and following this template that I've made on the fabric. I actually did it with like a fine tipped sharpie so you could barely see the lines and it didn't really show up on the fabric underneath the stitching so it really wasn't a big deal in the end. Check out this bad boy. We've finished all of our stitching. I think it looks pretty great. You'll see we have cut out our shape for the pad. Um, all of the stitching was finished on the edge so it shouldn't pull out. Now it's time for our quilt binding and our piping. We ran out and so two weeks later I found more. 
And we're on to machine number three. This is a new one. My other really nice machine fritzed out on me. So I'm dealing with that. And this is machine number three now. On to binding. <laughs> Check this out, it's starting to look like a saddle pad. We're going to put a line of stitching here just to start out with our padding for the front, and then it's going to be stuffed with a little bit of extra quilt binding to make it look real. <laughs> I'm going to mark it really quick just to kind of have a quick template where I'm going to be stitching and just going straight into it. I didn't really mark out exactly where I wanted it, but I just kind of guessed. <laughs> and there you have it, some nice swirly curvy stitching for the front. On to the second pad, finish that one up and then I got to seam ripping. So I just went ahead and pulled out any stitching that was inside the area I wanted to puff up. I tried to make sure there weren't very many holes where the stitches were, but it was kind of hard so I rubbed them out and they, you can't really see them so I guess that worked out fine. I grabbed a chopstick and I wrapped some of the quilt binding in front of it, stabbed it down into that new pocket there to fluff up the front a little bit more. I think it looks a lot better that way, it adds, acts a little bit more solid as if it's an actual pad up in front, so that turned out really nice. Just a couple final touches, made sure all the padding was even, and then we can move on to the piping cording that I chose. It's a silver color, it's really pretty. I had to take off some of the seam pieces for it, but I took a needle and thread and I simply looped it in between each one of the grooves and stitch it all the way on. It took me probably over two hours to get both sides done. It was just kind of labor intensive for some reason. I'm a really slow sewer, so this is sped up for your viewing pleasure and the rest I will spare you the details. As for the spine, this part gets a little bit complicated. I actually can't really recall how exactly I did it. It was a little while ago now that I'm finally filming this over but fun fact, I actually ended up finishing it in my hotel room right before Nemo's first recognized event, so that was thrilling to say the least. I was kind of on a time crunch, took over two hours once again. <laughs> Essentially, I just finished the edges by rolling them over and sewing them to themselves, just to make it look a little bit more presentable up top. I then switched sides and sewed the other side just to make sure there weren't any uh, live areas of the fabric showing. Um, on the underside, I put on, actually without seaming the edges, the black fabric just to cover up the back binding. I folded one edge over the binding on the white side, and then I just went to stitching it on as close to the edge as possible just so there wasn't that annoying little flap area. All the way down, and finishing it at the end. Since side number one has been finished, I just sandwiched both of the pieces together, folded the fabric over the other side, cannot remember whether or not I pinned it because shortly thereafter my camera died. So now enjoy, as Makara would say, the grand reveal. Okay, so maybe not really. So these are some pictures of Nemo at his very first recognized event. I have my brand new only PSO Sweden saddle pad on actually by PS of Sweden. Later on, I did use the pad that I made for the show jumping round, so I have a little bit from warm up and a couple pictures from tacking up that I will show for you guys. Check out Nemo in his beautiful new equestrian Stockholm slash PS of Sweden pad that I slaved over the night before and the couple months before that. Show jumping went great that weekend. I was really proud of his effort. Coincidentally, my free jump stirrups actually matched the color of the pad, which I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you guys again on my channel. I don't post very frequently, but when I do, it should be something interesting. So please turn on the notification bell if you want to keep track of what's happening over here at Haley Winston. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye!